If you've ever watched a medical drama, you might recognize these. They're MRI scans of human brains. The scan on the left shows the brain of a healthy infant from Uganda. But in the scan on the right, there's this circle. It's an abscess, a fluid-filled swelling. All of these scans show them too. These abscesses are linked to a condition called hydrocephalus. It affects more than 400,000 newborn children around the world each year and could lead to cognitive issues, brain damage, and death. What causes these cases of hydrocephalus in the African nation of Uganda is at the center of a medical mystery that tells us a lot about how global health works and can be improved. Hydrocephalus is a condition where you don't clear the fluid that is made in your brain every day and helps nourish it and suspend it uh, adequately. And in a young baby, uh, the fluid builds up in the head because the bones of the skull are not yet fused. The head gets large. Stephen Schiff is a pediatric neurosurgeon and Brush Professor of Engineering at Penn State. He's leading a global effort to better understand and treat childhood diseases in general, and hydrocephalus in particular. So we think that upwards of a million infants a year die in the first month of life uh, around the planet from infection. In 2007, Schiff spent a week in Uganda to help address technical problems with diagnosing epilepsy. He examined the equipment and made some professional connections, but what really caught his attention was the number of babies he encountered with enlarged heads. At the end of that week, I asked my colleague, well, what's the most important problem that uh, he needed help solving? And he said, well, why don't I try to figure out what makes these infants sick? I thought, how hard could that be? And here, 15 years later, we're finally getting answers to that. The doctors in this hospital had treated over a thousand cases like this without ever knowing the cause of the condition. To gain some clues, Schiff turned to genomics. There's a piece of a gene that all bacteria have that we have large databases for. So if we sequence pieces of that, we often can determine pretty close what the species is. Working with an international team of colleagues for over a decade, Schiff discovered that almost all the hydrocephalus in Uganda was caused by one organism, a specific variant of the bacterium Painobacillus thiaminolyticus. It was never known to cause serious illness. If we offer it to mice, the strain that we knew well doesn't hurt them. The strain from the African infants kills them usually in a day or so. It took more than $4 million and over a decade to identify and characterize a single pathogen in Uganda. Until similar work is performed in every low- and middle-income country, Schiff points to the promise of highly integrative prediction techniques to help reduce the burden of infection on infants globally. And although in the future, I think we're going to be able to have new technologies that enable us to do a much better job of determining what makes an individual sick from a given bacteria or a virus. Today, a workaround is what we call predictive personalized public health. The key, says Schiff, is to cross-reference relevant data streams, including location of infections, prevalence of specific bacteria in specific places, and environmental factors like rainfall, temperature, and humidity. By combining satellite data with on-the-ground surveillance over time, this novel approach could empower doctors to far more accurately diagnose patients at the point of care. As he testified to the House Foreign Affairs Committee in 2011, Schiff sees this work as a moral imperative. As a physician and scientist, and as a father, I'm struck by how much we don't know about newborn infections in developing countries. I am concerned that one reason is that the newborn infants who die there have no political voice. Schiff is quick to point out that none of the work he's doing would be possible without scores of people willing to cooperate in pursuit of a higher purpose, something bigger than anyone's individual career. We put 50 people on some of these scientific papers. You can get buried in the large numbers of names that are credited with authoring these discoveries. But people really surprise you. And faced with a project worth doing, I've been just so proud that the teams we've put together uh, are just as dedicated today as they were when we first asked, would you be interested in? You know, it's funny. You tell people, we got a lot of, we have thousands and thousands of infants dying in, these, in some of these sites. Uh, would you want to help us? And I usually don't get to finish the sentence before 
most folks who I would approach will go, I'm in. What do you need? And that's, that's part of the reason I think we're doing a good job. To keep up with the latest developments in Dr. Stephen Schiff's work, along with other scientists at Penn State's Huck Institutes of the Life Sciences, visit huck.psu.edu slash subscribe.